what no other power, no other but the Holy Ghost power of God can do. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time, this opportunity once again afforded to these your people and this your servant to come and share once again in the gospel, the soul cleansing, life saving, life changing gospel that you have given to us through your word. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for these your people. Thank you, O Lord, that we share love that runs from heart to heart and from breast to breast. We realize that you're a doctor. In a sick room, you're a lawyer in a courtroom. Lord, you are a wonderful counselor. You are the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, that we have found that reality in serving a true and a living God. Father, now it's again an opportunity that you've afforded this, your servant, to speak unto these thy people. And it's once again, O Lord, that I'm asking, if you please, just hide this, your servant, behind the cross, that those who are here might see thee and not me. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, my strength, my redeemer. In the name of Christ, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. I am going to uh, uh, the book of Matthew this morning, but I am going to return to the book of Exodus on next week. But I, there was something that came up during the course of this week, and I wanted to uh, try to assist a little bit. Sunday school is about to take place right after this service, and you all are going to have a lesson, and it's concerning fasting. And, and go with me to Matthew, the sixth chapter. And I want to talk to you just a moment here, and this is for instructional purposes. Uh, Brother Kidd and I, Brother Kevin up there in the balcony, he and I got in deep discussion on this, and then it was someone else I discussed this uh, uh, with uh, the other day, and I've forgotten who, I think we, Sunday, yes, a uh, Bible study class on Tuesday night, and then I think we were into it just a tad bit on Monday night as far as the uh, minister's class was concerned. But there's an important lesson. In this, this particular chapter <coughs> of Matthew, Jesus deals with several different issues. This is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. It's a continuation of his Sermon on the Mount. His Sermon on the Mount actually begins back in chapter 5. It goes through all of 5, all of 6, and it goes into 7, and it's not ended until you get to chapter 7. Please remember when you're reading or studying the Word of God to have a continuation sometimes of your study. But this particular chapter deals with uh, the, uh, uh, chapter 6. It is where you're going to find the area on fasting. Before I go into fasting, though, I want to go just a little bit further, and then I want to back up, okay? Go over to chapter 7, the beginning of it because there's something vitally important that ties in. All of this ties in together, and I want you to see how it ties in. Just sit down sometimes and you study this entirety. Jesus deals with different things, love, retaliation. He deals with charitable deeds. He deals with prayer. He deals with fasting. He deals with wealth. He deals with oaths, divorces. He deals with adultery. He deals with the fulfillment of the law. He deals with all of these different issues in his Sermon on the Mount. But I want to begin over chapter 7, verse 1. And I, 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 I caution because how many of you are God's hit men and women? Y'all won't raise y'all's hand. Yes, you are. And I'm going to show you how you are, okay? Y'all won't raise your hand. I've been there, done that. Sometimes we feel as though that we are the ones who can call the shots. I meet people like that all the time as far as life is concerned. I meet people who, you know, 
that person's going to hell and they done condemned them to hell altogether by themselves and there are many times that we make judgment calls and we have made judgment calls on those who we don't even get to know that well. We don't know anything about it. But look at what he says, judge not. He said that you not be judged. He said for with that, what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and you don't consider the plank that's in your own eye? He says that, uh, or how can you say to your brother, let re me remove the speck out of your eye and look at the plank in your own eye? He says, hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye. He said, then you can see clearly how to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. I said that because of the fact that the disciples, Jesus needed to deal with these guys. Y'all remember, they were the world's worst. And Jesus had to bring them. That, and we sanctified them, y'all. We did that. St. Mark, St. Saint, uh, John, St. Saint, Saint Peter, St. Paul, all of these Peter people that we have sanctified. But if you remember, Peter was the one who cut off the ear of the soldier. He didn't think he had a right to live any longer. He was the one who aimed for that soldier's head and he was trying to take off his head. James and John didn't like Samaritans. And if you remember when they refused to let Jesus come through the city of Samaria, it was James and John jumped up they got hot, and they said, Lord, do you just want us to call fire down on them to destroy them? In other words, he did not. James and John, neither one, did not think that they deserved life anymore. And they wanted to call fire, and Jesus told them, hold up, guys. I don't even know what type of spirit you're dealing with right now. And that's in our lives also. Sometimes we're God's hit men and women and we want to make the judgment call and not realize that those persons that we're real angry with and did uh, we have become so so engrossed in our anger to we want to make a call that God's still working on those particular individuals and it's important that we live upright before them that they will see Christ in us now let's back up I, I wanted to put that in because I want you to see something this morning. <clears throat> Chapter 6 of St. Matthew, he begins with telling us how to give, how to give and how to bless someone else. How that when we do the charitable deeds that we do, those should be done in secret and then it says the father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Don't go around telling folk what you're doing, what you've done for someone. The next part of it begins with prayer. And we discussed, it was the prayer portion, I think, that we discussed in Bible, in, in ministers meeting on Monday night and the portions of prayer and how we are to pray. This is what we call, in all honesty, the Lord's Prayer, but it is not. It is the pattern prayer for us to learn to pray after and how we should pray. It begins, our Father who art in heaven, holy or hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, we hold, his name is holy. There are parts of this prayer as to where it addresses the very God himself, the God of this universe, and how we are to address him. He is holy. Holy is the Lord our God. I understand why when Isaiah went into the temple, he heard the seraphim cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. God is holy. And we must never try to bring him to a status as to where we do not consider him in the holy respect and honor in which it is due to him. 
him and him alone. He is God and he is God all by himself. He don't need my help. He don't need yours. He, he's God all by himself. The choir just sung, have you any rivers that you can't cross? Have you any mountains that you can't climb? God specializes. And that he does. He specializes in diseases. There are things doctors can't understand sometimes. When a patient recovers miraculously, they don't have an answer for it, but I've got the answer. There's still a God who sits high and who looks low. I've seen people get up off their bed of affliction after the doctors have called in all the family members and said they weren't going to make it. I saw God, how he stepped in to the situation and raised them up once again. I've watched that. And every time it is a miracle out of the explanation and understanding of mankind. God is still a good God and he's still in control. I've seen situations though as to where people have had to go through the valley of the shadow of death and experience the death of someone who they thought or we all thought God took them too quick. He should have let them live a while longer. But that's in the will of God. And I understand his perfect will. And see, I still believe, where I, and, and, and I gotta tell you something, I still believe if your faith is planted in Christ, Absent from this body, amen. It teaches us to pray, but then he tells us how to conduct ourselves along the line of fasting. Now, there's some things that we got to get out of the way, first of all. Fasting deals with relationship with God. Fasting deals with the understanding, and it is the denial of the body of food, solid foods. You understand? I want you can't fast from TV. I don't heard. I'm fasting from TV. No, you aren't. You just chose not to watch it. You can't fast from that. That just time you chose to spend turning off the television set. Yeah, I, I, I'm fasting from driving. Somebody's going to, no, you, didn't, uh -uh, you just chose not to drive. But people have gotten silly along this line of fasting. Fasting is about relationship. It's about seeking the will of God. It's about abstaining. It's about committing yourself in that time in which you do to prayer and to understanding and listening for an answer as far as what God is concerned or deepening your relationship with the understanding of who God is. There are different types as far as fact. There are some that exist from sun up to sundown. There are others that exist out over a period of three, four days. There are some that can extend out further than that. Seven weeks, some have gone even a month. It is important to know how, and there's a class that's being taught right now, right? In Bible Institute on fasting. So if you decide to do so, it's important to know how to begin. It's important to know how to end it. It's important to know what your body can stand. Do you understand? Some of you can't. Some of you can't. Some of you have to commit yourself strictly to prayer and to the understanding of knowing that God will show up on time. When you deepen your relationship with him, sometimes there are some of you who can't. You're diabetic. And you can't. You've got to eat at regular intervals in order that you maintain healthy body, healthy weight, healthy glucose levels, and the A1C and everything else. You've got to do it. So therefore, you can. But there are others who can. That, the other thing I want to bring out, don't be fasting talking about I'm going to lose weight. That ain't it. Uh-uh. That ain't no fast. That is, you just on a diet. That's all you did. You went on a diet. 
you chose to not eat food and you thought you'd lose weight. And usually what happens when you do that and trying to lose weight and you decide to abstain from food, by the time you end it, you're going to go gorge yourself and all that pounds coming right back on. Hallelujah. Thank you. But there's an important way of handling this. Let's look at what the word actually has to say. Verse 16. First of all, he says, moreover, he says, when you fast, don't be like hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. First of all, it's between you and God. Don't walk around here looking like you're about to fall out and telling everybody, oh, I'm on a fast. Don't do that. That's what the Bible says. It says that don't be like the hypocrites. First of all, hypocrites love to show that they're holy. They want to show their holiness and not let the holiness of God overshadow their lives. We all got faults. You hear me? And some of us have not outgrown some of the things. God's still working on me. God, when he gets through with me now, I'm going to come forth like pure gold. But right now, uh, uh, there's still things that God is working on in every single one of our lives. So he tells us, first off, don't be hypocritical about this thing. They love to look like they're fasting. They love to have the long faces. They love to walk around drooping and saying, I'm on a fast. That's what he's saying. Society has not changed a whole lot. Do y'all understand that? People were doing the same thing in the days of Jesus as they are doing right now. And they are those who like to appear in a holy estate and trying to look holy, trying to say, I'm fasting. Want everybody to know I'm on a fast. And Jesus says, that's not what you need to do. They, you want to, he says, they like to appear to you as though they are fasting. In other words, they appear to you that way and they leave you down here on Sunday morning and they go to McDonald's and get that double cheeseburger. <laughs> they lie. That's what's going on. He says, when you fast, now look at verse 17. He said, but when you fast, he says, anoint your head and your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but your father who is in the secret place, your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. In other words, you're seeking the Lord. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. In other words, what God is requiring of us, what the word of God is telling us in this. And I, I, I want to put it in today's terms, okay? Wash your face when you fast. Clean yourself up when you fast. Brush your teeth because your breath going to stink. With all that acid coming up off your stomach. Come on now. Let's be real about this thing. Don't do that. Had a man come burping in my face and tell, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm fasting. Uh-uh. That's unacceptable. want to appear to be something. And I don't mean to offend, and I'm not here to offend you. I'm telling you what the Word says. Jesus said, he says that when you fast, he said, anoint your head, wash your face, get up, take a bath, get up, put, 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 put whatever, whatever it is, mousse or whatever you need in your hair. Comb your hair, dress up, and let this be between you and God. This ain't between you and nobody. 
lives. It's about your relationship with the Lord. It's about walking by faith and not by sight. It's about having a relationship. And I'm here to tell you, God will show up on time every time. God will deepen your understanding of his word. He will deepen the relationship that is between you and he. He will deepen the understanding as to how this thing, sometimes you hear scripture, you don't understand it, but then he'll reveal it to you through his word. And he'll open your understanding as to where you can understand, wow, God, you, you're awesome. You can truly walk by faith and not by sight. You learn some things about God's Holy Spirit, how that he'll comfort you. See, see, if you ain't been through nothing and you have not really turned yourself over to the Lord, I'm here to tell you, you don't understand what I'm saying, but I'm here to tell you that there is an understanding that you can get through and by the fasting, the prayer, the understanding in the relationship, the developing of one self along the lines of everything that's going on as far as what God's true will is for your life. You can understand death a whole lot better. You know what? Death is a part of life. It's the final part, but it's a part of life. You can stand at the graveside of a loved one and tears will be flowing, but when they say ashes to ashes, dust to dust, you listen for the final part where it says, looking toward the general resurrection in the last day, when both earth and sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made likened unto his own glorious body. And when you hear that, you go study, and you hear me. I studied about the body of Christ once he was raised from the dead, and I studied about the glorified body. And the Bible tells me when he shall appear, I shall be like him because I'll see him just as he is. I'm going to have me a glorified body one day too. You hear me? You're going to have one if you trust in the Lord. You'll understand what it means, the glorified body that can defy space and time, that can defy solid walls and appear and, and then come in and be in among the other brethren in heaven and in the holy place of Almighty God. When you fast, don't be like the hypocrites. And as you study to deepen your knowledge of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as you meditate on him, as you consecrate yourself in that time of fasting, and as you begin to strive to understand all of the things that are going on, God will deepen your walk with him. He'll deepen that relationship you can have with him. And then you will truly understand what the song says when it says, love lifted me when nothing else could help. It was God's love that lifted me. This morning, do you have a relationship with him? Have you deepened your knowledge in the Lord? You can today, and we're here to help you do that. That's the reason we offer so many teaching ministries of this church. We want you to know that you can truly walk by faith and not by by sight today. If you're here, you're without a church home, or you've been visiting for a while, and you haven't made a commitment, come on and become a part of the church family. We want you to become a member here. We want you as brothers and sisters to walk with us. Our deacons are going to move out right now to receive you into this church family. And as the choir sings, step out now and come. We'd love to have you. If you're afraid to come down by yourself, touch some.